Hey, it's Brian Burns. Welcome to this episode of Career Advice, Ideas, Options, Hacking, and everything that has to do with you getting the dream job, the dream career of your life. Today, I wanted to talk about money. Uh, Money is uh, one of the reasons we work, (laughs) one of the reasons we need to work, one of the reasons we have to work. And I think people have all kinds of emotional attachments to money, that the amount of money that they make is the amount of money that they're worth, uh, that uh, if there's nothing in it for me, I'm not going to do it. Um, You know, I won't get out of bed for at least this amount of money. It's a very emotional, personal topic, and people are all over the map on it. And I think you have to just take the emotion out of it for a while and really take the realism. And I think too many people don't think about it. I think we, you know, when we're in high school or when we're in grade school, you know, that everyone asks you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, that it, it's kind of backwards, isn't it? Why aren't people kind of guiding us towards what we're good at? Because as, as a, even kids, we, We kind of come up with little skills and abilities that are innate in us. Uh, Some of us are introverts, extroverts. Some of us are super uh, well fit into school. And when, when that happens, and some of us aren't, some of us are physical and... Um, you know, really high energy or, or get along with people or don't get along with people. And what ends up happening is no one really guides us. Everybody says, well, I want to be an astronaut or a policeman or a teacher. And the problem is these things stick with us <laughs> throughout life. And it, even in high school, the question, what are you going to do after high school? Remember that question? And it was like, you either went into college, you went into the military, or you got a job. And even then, when you even if you have, you were lucky enough to get it into college and have it paid for, or you get stuck with the bills, did how many people guided us on what major to focus on? We're spending four years of our lives, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and and I see so many people coming out with degrees that aren't marketable: anthropology, history. Uh, or degrees that require advanced degrees, physics, and, um, you know, all all of these things. And I'm not judging. I'm just educating here that if you come out with a degree uh, that is unmarketable, and I see this all the time, this is not uh, an exception. This is the rule. Because guess what? You know, people are, are parents are so glad they get into college that they kind of want to let them go study what they want to, what they're interested in. And if you can afford that, that's one thing. You know, if you don't have to, uh, you know, immediately get a job, you can have a gap year or, or travel through Europe. God bless you. But uh, most of us don't have that opportunity. We get out of college with a vanilla degree, what let's just call vanilla meaning uh, a plain degree with no real vocational skill. Even a business degree, you know, unless it's very specific and like accounting, maybe even finance, uh, you know, marketing might be a little too loose. That's kind of what I got mine in. And I didn't honestly didn't know, <laughs> you know, even when I, I went to school at night and I, I was selling shoes during the day. And then I, I got a job building um, computer boards, putting them together, basically. I didn't know what they did. I was just given the instructions and put them together. And then I ran the shipping and receiving department, the parts department for the place. And then I did uh, some purchasing for them. And then I, I, I stumbled into selling um just by somebody needed, uh, you know, a cheap sales, <laughs> cheap in salary, not cheap in uh, quality uh, salesperson. And then I, I stumbled into computer programming. And most of this stuff was stumbling. And the problem with stumbling is you can stumble bad as well as you can stumble good. Uh, you know, I was money motivated from the very beginning. That was, that, that was something that... Um, 
was kind of innate in me in that I saw money as independence, not needing other people, not relying on other people, not needing to work for other people. I saved my money, did the paper boy thing, you know, worked at the neighborhood lawns and stuff, anything for a buck, basically. And that motivated me. So I had that innate thing, but yet no real guidance, no real judgment. And what we have to understand is when we're that young, and some of you may be that young or maybe let's say you just got out of college and you've got a vanilla degree from – and I, I, what I hear all the time is a vanilla degree from a great school. And what ends up happening too often is people f- fumble into some kind of mediocre job that they're not interested in and they, they kind of get stuck or they go back to school and then get um, something that's a little bit more applicable, maybe, maybe an MBA or a master's in this or that. And some of that is uh, with forethought and planning, and there's a skill and an, and an ability, but a lot of it is just stumbling. And if if somebody – clearly by the time you're 22, people are stop guiding you, <laughs> start – Pushing you, pushing you, you know, out of the house, out to, to get what they call a real job. And the problem is we just don't know. And that's kind of one of the reasons I started this podcast was I wanted to kind of enlighten people about what I've seen happen, work and not work, uh, and not and to prevent you from getting tricked into the little traps, the the books about becoming a blogger or a YouTuber, or even a podcaster. You know, all of these things, they, they could be fun, creative resources uh, to get the word out about you. And if you have enough runway, uh, they, they can turn into a business. I'm not saying they can't. They can. But the runway uh, you're looking at is like, I'd say, three to five years. Uh, and that, that means without pay. <laughs> It means you're interning for yourself, essentially. Uh, so it's much better as a side hustle than it is for a primary hustle. Uh, you know, once in a while, there is the person that uh, wins the lottery. And we, we then uh, say, if he can do it, I can do it. And that was basically what created a million software companies when they saw Bill Gates, you know, become the richest man in the world. And And we see it constantly today with, you know, social media and, and stuff. And yes, if you're in the top one tenth or one hundredth of one percent in certain talent or beauty or skill, you probably could make a living in less than the three to five years, but I wouldn't bet on it, you know, because the, the competition and the gaming of it, and it's just not the way to go. Um, but the, the, the way to go is really where the food is, you know, the old Sam Kinison joke that I, I say is really the best career advice you was ever given. Uh, you can search on YouTube for it. Uh, Sam Kinison, um, send the food, uh, where he, he makes fun, you know, inappropriately, politically incorrectly of people who live in a desert. We have to send food to them. You know, and it's like he picks up uh, imaginary sand and he says, you know what this is? It's sand. You know what grows in it? Nothing. You know what's going to grow in it a thousand years from there? Nothing. Move to where the food is. Don't wait for us to ship you the food. And and, and that logic, although uh, politically incorrect uh, and uh, inappropriately funny, uh, is so accurate is we 've got to go where the food is, so money is the food, and we 're basically exchanging our time, energy, creativity, and talents for money, and trying to find the right way to do that is 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 hard, certainly when you 're starting out, and if you overlook the amount of money that you can make if you uh, don't anticipate or you think it's going to make more than what society grants it, uh, you're fooling yourself. Meaning, 
let's say you want you you want a certain lifestyle and that lifestyle is a 100k lifestyle but that profession pays 50k and if you google it no matter where in the country maybe one tenth of one percent makes 100k at it then you 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 basically have to make a change and I, I get this on the, the Brutal Truth uh, sales podcast all the time because everybody in sales stumbled into sales. Nobody, um, you know, in high school says, I want to be a salesperson. Uh, nobody in college says that. You know, some colleges have some courses on sales, but it's not really the reality of what selling is. And even we have a misperception of what the reality of sales is. I'm talking, you know, business to business sales versus business to consumer. I'm not talk, talk, talking about selling cars or selling retail. I'm talking about two businesses selling. It, it's a much different idea of uh, what that is. It's much more relationship oriented. It's much more uh, about communication than it is about uh presenting and persuasion and closing. It's much more process oriented, you know, and all of those people that I interview, they, they, everybody laughs about how they got into it. Everybody says they stumbled into it and the driver was money. And, um, and I've seen too many people in sales be only money focused and it ruins their, it actually depletes their skill set and reduces their ability to make money. Uh, the people who understand the whole game of, you know, focusing on the right people, the people who need your product fit, uh, are interested, participate with you, and you help them the most, those are the people that make the most money. And I'm talking about like brain surgeon money. I'm talking about CEO type money. And, you know, not the first year, but certainly after five or 10 years, they can get to that level. Um but the smart ones understand that it's a roller coaster. It's not the same money every year. It's not like a baseball player that, you know, or an athlete where their contract goes up and up and then they retire at 30, 33. Um, it's much more like uh, one year it's, it's super fantastic. The next year it's okay. The next year it's terrible. Then it's, then it's fantastic again. It's, it's a roller coaster. Uh, depending on so many things, your territory, uh, your compensation plan. Uh, and this is why a lot of people become entrepreneurs. Now, entrepreneurs, you know, the, the old saying is you, you, you exchange a job where you worked 40 hours a week for a job that you work 80 hours a week <laughs> for less money. And certainly for the first few years, that's, that's a pretty accurate statement. Uh, so what we have to do is first understand what kind of money, what kind of lifestyle do we want? Because that, that's really what money is about. How long do we want to work? Uh, where do we want to do this? Are we, gonna, are we willing to go where the food is? And instead of waiting for the food to come to us in the desert, you know, unfortunately today, there's so many of these little conveniences. The food can come to you in the desert, but somebody has to pay for it. That's the problem. You know, the, the, those phone apps all are attached to someone's credit card and somebody's bank account. So really think through that when you're planning your career and be realistic about it. You know, too often, and, and I've seen the guidance and some parents give terrible guidance. I, I had a guy I knew who put his kid through some tennis college. Now, th that that may seem generous and nice, but it's misleading. You know, I, and I asked, is the kid the best in his high school? Well, he's the third best in his high school. Uh, so is he, where's he rank in the state? Oh, well, he's in his top 200. The, the likelihood that, you know what that kid's set up to be is a tennis trainer. And there's nothing wrong with that, but do you really need to pay 200 grand to become a tennis trainer? Or is that going to afford the lifestyle that you want? Is, you know, showing people how to give a backswing? Is that, what, what, obviously, 
what what everybody wants is that that want that gambling that lottery ticket and the the lottery the math doesn't work it, the lottery is a tax on the poor meaning that it is simply a tax the likelihood of you winning is so uh, just just search it's a, it's a cognitive bias basically they, they they never show the picture of all the people who lost in the lottery because showing a picture of hundreds of millions of people uh isn't possible showing a picture of the one winner with the big check is very easy and we all say well they're just like me that's the problem the problem is that we have to realize what are we capable of what's the likelihood of it happening and focusing on what we're good at what the market will pay for and how well we can do it and and then stay on that and navigate the economy and the work space based off of what we're good at what we like to do and what the market will pay for that and uh, own it because the clearly we don't want to just stumble into things and maybe you'll stumble into something good hopefully i wish you the best thanks for listening uh check me out on linkedin Uh, Connect up with me on LinkedIn. I really appreciate anybody who shares my content on LinkedIn, as well as my website, B, the number 2B, B2B, revenue.com.